I'm going to show in this lesson three shapes that I've come up with for playing major pentatonic scales on the banjo. Um, we're all probably pretty familiar with the minor pentatonic scale as a blues scale. Um, this, the major pentatonic scale is actually the same grouping of notes, it just starts on what would have been the minor third degree of the minor blues scale, or the second note of the minor blues scale. So, uh, for example, we'll work out of the key of C uh, during this lesson. The notes that we're going to be using are going to be starting with C, the first, the second degree, the third degree, the fifth degree, and the sixth degree of the scale. So we have C, D, E, G, and A. And then the scale is just going to repeat itself after that. C, D, E, G, and A. So the concept behind these shapes um, is each one of them involves an extension above the octave, um, above the one octave reach of the scale. For example, here's, here's one octave of the C major pentatonic scale. From C to C. Now the shape that I'm going to show you here is going to extend beyond this up to an E above the top C above that C, which is where we start the pattern. So what we're going to have is and you can also use your thumb to get that D on the fifth string. Depend just it's personal preference and comfort. So that's going to be the root position version of this shape, starting from the first degree of the scale. The, n the second shape for this exercise would be what's referred to as the first inversion shape, which means starting from the third degree of the scale. And that one, first of all, we're going to be building, working off of this basic C shape. But we're going to get the sixth degree and the second degree of the scale, and then the extension is going to go all the way up to the fifth degree of the scale, the G up here. So this shape is going to look like Now the third shape is the one that's the largest stretch and in the key of C, it puts you way up here in the stratosphere at the very top of your the neck of the instrument. This is what's going to be referred to as the second inversion of the shape because it's going to start from the fifth degree of the scale, this being your C shape. And this is going to be working off of the standard bar C shape, which would also be found here at the fifth fret. But we're going to be the octave above it up here. and. This one is going to look like this. Notice I put the D note in on the way down. I didn't put it in on the way up. Um, that's kind of a personal preference. It's all about how you want to phrase it. That's the, a couple of these other shapes work the same way. The the sixth or the second degree may show up in one octave, but not in the other octave. I've I've kind of phrased them this way just for ease and fluidity up and down the, the neck of these shapes. Um, but obviously you can do anything you want with them. So again, the second inversion shape starts on this G and is going to work us all the way up to the C, the very top note you've got on the instrument. This can also be reached, of course, out of this C shape. This, it really gets into a big old stretch here. That's, for example, talking about using the thumb or the index. Down here, I'm more likely to use, um, sorry, my middle finger, because it's, an easy, it's uh, more ergonomic than getting the thumb around here and, and still connecting in both of these places. Um, personal preference.
So as far as right hand technique is concerned for this exercise, what I use is kind of a combination between single string technique and forward and backward rolls. Um, so depending on how the shape starts, like for example with this one, the C root position, I'm going to use some single string stuff to get these first couple of notes out till I get up to this G. But after the G with the thumb, I'm going to do a forward roll up to this C, and then I'm going to use more of the single string type technique to bounce between the first and fifth strings for the, ex for the extensions on top of each of these shapes. So it's a bit of a hybrid technique. Um, and I would, I would imagine that I probably don't even do it exactly the same every time. Um, so I would suggest just play with them and figure out what is comfortable for you. Uh, and most importantly, don't hurt yourself. The way these shapes run into each other, you could segue one into another and into the next. And then, of course, the pattern is going to repeat themselves back into the first one again as the three of these shapes symmetrically lay out on the neck. For example, starting with the C in root position, moving into the C shape in the first inversion, and then into the C shape in second inversion. So as you can see, these shapes are a bit of a stretch on the hands, but once you get comfortable uh, with these motions and these patterns, they're, they lay in such a way that you can play them very quickly. <laughs> And of course, these are all movable shapes because they're all closed position shapes. You can play them in any key you want to. B flat, for example. You could try them in F. Even just to be mean, A flat. 